friends it's a beautiful day here in southern indiana uh, late february things are starting to come alive the songbirds are starting to stake out their territories spring ephemeral flowers uh, just beginning to pop uh, their heads out of the ground uh, still a little too cold for fungal activity funguses are biologically active 40 degrees to 90 degrees generally so it's still a little too cold uh, for any fruiting bodies to be popping up generally speaking so i thought today we would talk about the uh, Two main kinds of uh, wood decomposing fungi, that being brown rot fungi and white rot fungi. Uh, right here is an old uh, remnant of the chicken of the woods from the fall. You were a delicious mushroom. Um, that is an example of a brown rot fungus. An example of a white rot fungus would be uh, like an oyster mushroom or shiitake. Um, but yeah, let's uh, look at these two kinds of wood decomposers up close. All right, brown rot and white rot funguses. Uh, normally trees are healthy, but they have resistance to pathogens, uh, but once they become diseased or wounded or die or uh, part of them falls to the ground, then those parts are susceptible to decomposers like the white rot and brown rot funguses. Uh, wood is primarily composed of three components. You got your cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. Uh, cellulose is polysaccharide chain, Polysaccharide means many sugars. Uh, you know, it's a glucose chain of tens of thousands or more, uh, very strong material. Hemicellulose would be thousand or less uh, sugars in a chain and different sugars. It can also be branched as, as well as a chain. And then lignin is a complex polymer that's kind of like the glue that holds it together. Uh, but cellulose is very hard to break down and access the energy. Uh, ruminants like deers and cows uh, can do it with their four-chambered stomachs fermenting uh, the cellulose with the help of microbes. Uh, termites can also do that with the help of microbes, uh, but funguses can do it all on their own. So here's an example of white rot fungus. Uh, it's kind of white stringy bits left, um, very spongy and easy to break apart. Um, so what's happening here is the white rot fungus is actually breaking down the lignin and uh, mostly to get at the cellulose it gets uh, some benefit out of the lignin but mostly it wants the the cellulose and it just kind of leaves these uh bleached out fi long thin fibers uh, an example of the brown rot it's more of this darker uh kind of cuboid decomposition very mulch like uh it's uh often found uh, in conifers more often in conifers uh White rot fungus is more common overall, about three to one. Uh, but this is where the just the cellulose has be, been decomposed by the mushroom and it leaves this brown kind of uh, residue of the lignin behind. Um, they're both very spongy, uh, mulchy, and you know, retain water very well. So that improves the soil and also makes a great place for new plants to grow. Uh, as you can imagine where a tree fell a few uh, years ago or a number of years ago would be a good plant, uh, place for a new tree to grow or plants to grow because there'll be more uh, sunlight there. So there you have it, brown rot and white rot funguses. Uh, let's move on. All right, well, I haven't been down this way for a while. Uh, it's possible we could find some oyster mushrooms, but it hasn't really uh, been raining much. Uh, but we will definitely find some evidence of some wood decaying fungus. Uh, sapro, saprophytic fungus, what we call them. Uh, so let's go see what we can find. So here we have the Griffula frondosa, head of the woods, maitake mushroom, or what's left of it. Uh, this is a perfect tree for that. Big old red oak tree, 100 years old. 
Um, I'm on my way out, apparently. Uh, this is a white butt rot fungus. Butt rot. Um, grows at the base of the tree. These come back uh, generally every year, especially on a big tree like this. It's very possible, so I will need to come back here in the fall. Sorry I didn't come back uh, this way last fall. But uh, there's one saprophytic fungus, one white rot fungus. Let's go see what else we can find. Cool. Look at all these artist conks all the way down here. There's some young ones just starting to grow. These little ones look like a little burnt out, a little older. sides are white on the newer ones the older ones have turned brown and kind of rotted out stained a bit all right let's talk about the uh, artist conch anoderma aplanatum uh, we tend to think of mushrooms as being ephemeral mystical uh, fruiting bodies that may be there one day and gone the next but uh, this is a perennial fungus that can come back year after year uh, grow to be uh, 10 inches um, maybe even up to two feet wide. Um, there's another Ganoderma uh, brownii that's in the Pacific Northwest that gets even bigger, I think, up to three feet, uh, but very similar. You can't really see the spores even with magnification, they're so tiny. In fact, the uh, Japanese uh, common name for this translates to red dusted monkey bench, I believe. It's, this produces so many spores that there's the microcurrents of air will deposit some of the spores on top. So after a while, uh, it'll just kind of have a red dust of spores on top of it. Uh, it can produce millions of spores in one day, trillions in a lifetime. I think we underestimate how many spores are just everywhere in the world, breathing them in in our body, in the atmosphere, seeding the rain clouds. Spores are everywhere. Um, but yeah, this is a perennial fungus and each year it will grow a new layer and a new tubular fertile surface. Uh, I cut one in half, but it's kind of rotten. It's not the best example. Maybe I can show a different example. Uh, but you can see how it kind of grew here, deposited a layer of tubes the first year, and the second year it did another one underneath here. So it's kind of, yeah, it looks like an ice cream sandwich, kind of. Um, but yeah, these are, these are fun uh, to see. The artist conch, the artist bracket, uh, Especially when they are uh, in their growing season, in the warm months, you can draw on them and scratch off the white uh, pore surface and reveal the browner underneath part. So it's you know it's fun to do an etching if you're out of whale's teeth or uh, elephant tusk to etch upon. You could try the artist conch um, when when they are growing. Uh, the undersurface will be a bright white and you have to be really careful handling them because they will stain uh, brown if you touch them with your fingers or anything. So you kind of want to wrap them up in a cloth before you take them home. Uh, if you would like it to make an etching on one and then they will dry out and that will become kind of a per permanent piece of artwork. So that's kind of fun, um, but they can live a long time. So maybe uh, just leave them there. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, that's a fun mushroom. The artist conch, a white rot fungus here in the woods. All right, let's move on. Oh, wow, look at this sassafras tree. Woodpeckers have really gone to town on this one. Must be some delicious invertebrates in there. Oh, here's some more wood decomposers for what's left of them. Black-footed polypore, royal porus badius. Um, 
when it's new and fresh, it will be kind of more of a yellower on top and have this black stem at the bottom. But yeah, these are from the fall or last summer. Oh, they're stuck together. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, white rot fungus, inedible, uh, no known medicinal uses, but pretty cool mushroom. I love its wavy uh, margins. Uh, and when it's, uh, when it comes out, it is quite beautiful. But yeah, there's the uh, black-footed polypore. You can see the black foot on that one. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay, well, let's move on. See what else we can find. Oh, wow. Okay, that's an amazing harvest comp. A couple of them there. There's another one over here. Um, wow, look at that one. It's really big. Really big. How's the other side look? Ooh, nice and white. That would be a good candidate for etching. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's nice. Oh right, this is a really cool specimen of the artist conch. Um, you might ask, can I eat this mushroom? And technically the answer would be, yes, you can eat this mushroom. Uh, technically you can eat any mushroom once, uh, but it's really just too hard. You, if you had a really big mallet or a high powered blender, you could, uh, turn this into powder and use it as a uh, soup and stew thickener, add some umami uh, to your soups and stews. That's a thing, but you're more likely to use this, uh, as a medicine. Uh, much like the Rishi, Rishi mushroom, uh, Ganoderma lucidum, or in these parts would be Ganoderma sessile. The uh, artist conch Ganoderma appellatum uh, has a lot of promising medicinal uh, compounds, um, beneficial medicinal compounds. You've got the beta glucans, the uh, amino boosting compounds, uh, triterpenes, antioxidants. Uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, this was used to treat uh, tuberculosis and throat cancer, also to ease uh, gastrointestinal distress. Uh, but more modern research, uh, they've studied some isolated compounds uh, from this mushroom and it may have uh, some antibacterial properties, some tumor reducing properties, and it has been shown to uh, have health benefits for diabetic uh, lab rats. So that's all very encouraging. Uh, you can't find this mushroom almost anywhere in the world. Uh, it grows on all kinds of hardwood trees and even some conifers so uh if you get out there yourself you're likely to find this uh, i did have a great time today looking at wood de de decomposing uh, funguses i uh, hope you enjoyed that i'm going to head on home and try to think of some subject matter that would be worthy of putting on this amazing mushroom so i'll see you next time on mushroom journeys <laughs>